Rijeka Croatian pronunciation, RIJK, listen, Italian, Fiume, FJU Mi, Slovene, Reka, German, Sankt Veit am Flam is the principal seaport and the third largest city in Croatia after Zagreb and Split. It is located in Primorje Gorski Kotar County on KV Arner Bay, an inlet of the Adriatic Sea and has a population of 128,624 inhabitants. Historically, because of its strategic position and its excellent deep water port, the city was fiercely contested, especially among Italy, Hungary serving as the Kingdom of Hungary's largest and most important port, and Croatia, changing hands and demographics many times over centuries. According to the 2011 census data, the overwhelming majority of its citizens are Croats, along with small numbers of Bosniaks, Italians and Serbs. The city has a strong local sense of identity and the autochthonous inhabitants of Rijeka are referred to as Fumans. Rijeka is the main city of Primorje Gorski Kotar County. The city's economy largely depends on shipbuilding shipyards, three, Maj, and Victor Lenac Shipyard, and maritime transport. Rijeka hosts the Croatian National Theater Ivan Place. Zajic, first built in 1765, as well as the University of Rijeka, founded in 1973 but with roots dating back to 1632 School of Theology, apart from Croatian and Italian, linguistically the city is home to its own unique dialect of the Venetian language, Fumin, with an estimated 20,000 speakers among the autochthonous Italians, Croats and other minorities. Historically Fumin served as the main lingua franca between the many ethnicities inhabiting the multi-ethnic port town. In certain suburbs of the modern extended municipality the autochthonous population still speaks the Chakavian tongue, a dialect of the Croatian language. In 2016, Rijeka was selected as the European Capital of Culture for 2020, alongside Galway, Republic of Ireland. Name Historically, Rijeka was also called Tharsatica, Vitopolis lit, city of Saint Vito, or Flumen lit, river in Latin. The city is called Rijeka in Croatian, Reka in Slovene, and Reka or Rika in the local dialects of the Chakavian language. It is called Fiume in Italian. All these names mean river in their respective languages. Meanwhile, Hungarian has adopted the Italian name while in German the city has been called Sankt Veit am Flam. Saint Vito on the River Flam, or Flaum, Flam. Topic: Geography. Rijeka is located in western Croatia, 131 kilometers (81 miles) southwest of the capital Zagreb, on the northern coast of Rijeka Bay, 45 degrees 21 and 14 degrees 26 e, as part of a larger KV Arnor Gulf of the Adriatic Sea, which is a large bay Mediterranean Sea most deeply indented to the European mainland. The Bay of Rijeka, which is bordered by Vila Vrata between Istria and the island of Kres, Sredna Vrata between Kres and Krk Island and Mala Vrata between Krk and the mainland is connected to the Bay of Kv Arnor and is deep enough about 50 meters or 160 feet for the biggest sailing ships. The city of Rijeka lies at the mouth of River Riasina and in the Vinodal micro-region of the Croatian coast. Two important land transport routes start in Rijeka due to its location. The first route is to the Pannonian Basin given that Rijeka is located alongside the narrowest point of the Dinaric Alps about 50 km or 31 miles. The other route, across Postojna Gate connects Rijeka with Slovenia, Italy and beyond. History Ancient and medieval times Though traces of Neolithic settlements can be found in the region, the earliest modern settlements on the site were Celtic Tharsatica modern TRSAT, now part of Rijeka on the hill, and the tribe of mariners, the Liberty, in the natural harbour below. The city long retained its dual character. Pliny mentioned Tharsatica in his Natural History e. In the time of Augustus, the Romans rebuilt Tharsatica as a municipium flumen McMullen 2000, situated on the right bank of small river Riasina whose name means, the big river. 
It became a city within the Roman province of Dalmatia until the 6th century. After the 4th century Rijeka was rededicated to St. Vitus, the city's patron saint, as Terra Fluminus Sancti Sancti Viti or in German Sanct Vitum Flaum. From the 5th century onwards, the town was ruled successively by the Ostrogoths, the Byzantines, the Lombards, and the Avars. Croats settled the city starting in the 7th century giving it the Croatian name, Rika Svetoga Vita, the river of Saint Vitus. At the time, Rijeka was a feudal stronghold surrounded by a wall. At the center of the city, its highest point, was a fortress. In 799 Rijeka was attacked by the Frankish troops of Charlemagne. Their siege of Trsat was at first repulsed, during which the Frankish commander Duke Eric of Friuli was killed. However, the Frankish forces finally occupied and devastated the castle, while the Duchy of Croatia passed under the overlordship of the Carolingian Empire. From about 925, the town was part of the Kingdom of Croatia, from 1102 in personal union with Hungary. Trsat Castle in the town was rebuilt under the rule of the House of Francopan. In 1288 the Rijeka citizens signed the Law Codex of Vinodal, one of the oldest codes of law in Europe. Rijeka even rivaled with Venice when it was purchased by the Habsburg Emperor Frederick III, Archduke of Austria in 1466. It would remain under Habsburg overlordship for over 450 years, except for French rule between 1805 and 1813, until its occupation by Croatian and subsequently Italian irregulars at the end of World War I. Topic: <laughs> Under Habsburg sovereignty. After coming under Habsburg rule in 1466, the town was attacked and plundered by Venetian forces in 1509. While Ottoman forces attacked the town several times, they never occupied it. From the 16th century onwards, Rijeka was largely rebuilt in its present Renaissance and Baroque style. Emperor Charles VI declared the port of Rijeka a free port together with the port of Trieste in 1719 and had the trade route to Vienna expanded in 1725. By order of Empress Maria Theresa in 1779, the city was annexed to the Kingdom of Hungary and governed as corpus separatum directly from Budapest by an appointed governor, as Hungary's only international port. From 1804, Rijeka was part of the Austrian Empire Kingdom of Croatia-Slavonia after the Compromise of 1867, in the Croatia-Slavonia province, in the early 19th century, the prominent economical and cultural leader of the city was Andrija Ludevit Adamic. Fiume also had a significant naval base, and in the mid-19th century it became the site of the Austro-Hungarian Naval Academy K, U, K. Marine Academy, where the Austro-Hungarian Navy trained its officers. Giovanni de Chota mayor from 1872 to 1896 proved to be an authoritative local political leader. Under his leadership, an impressive phase of expansion of the city started, marked by major port development, fueled by the general expansion of international trade and the city's connection 1873 to the Austro-Hungarian railway network. Modern industrial and commercial enterprises such as the Royal Hungarian Sea Navigation Company, Adria, and the paper mill, situated in the Riacina Canyon, producing cigarette paper sold around the world, became trademarks of the city. The second half of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century up to World War I was a period of rapid economic growth and technological dynamism for Rijeka. The industrial development of the city included the first industrial-scale oil refinery in Europe in 1882 and the first torpedo factory in the world in 1866, after Robert Whitehead, manager of the Stabilimento Tecnico Fumano. An Austrian engineering company engaged in providing engines for the Austro-Hungarian Navy, designed and successfully tested the world's first torpedo. Rijeka also became a pioneering center for high-speed photography. The Austrian physicist Peter Sacher working in Rijeka's Austro-Hungarian Marine Academy took the first photograph of a bullet flying at supersonic speed in 1886, devising a technique that was later used by Ernst Mach in his studies of supersonic motion. Rijeka's port underwent tremendous development fueled by generous Hungarian investments, becoming the main maritime outlet for Hungary and the eastern part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the fifth port in the Mediterranean, after Marseille, Genoa, Naples and Trieste. The population grew rapidly from only 21,000 in 1880 to 50,000 in 1910. 
Major civic buildings constructed at this time include the Governor's Palace, designed by the Hungarian architect Alahos Hausmann. There was an ongoing competition between Rijeka and Trieste, the main maritime outlet for Austria, reflecting the rivalry between the two components of the dual monarchy. The Austro-Hungarian navy sought to keep the balance by ordering new warships from the shipyards of both cities. Apart from the rapid economic growth, the period encompassing the second half of the 19th century and up to World War I also saw a shift in the ethnic composition of the city. The Kingdom of Hungary, which administered the city during that period, favoured the Hungarian element in the city and encouraged immigration from all lands of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In this period the city became a melting pot encompassing most of the main ethnicities and cultures in empire, being also a main departure port for emigration to the New World. The mixed ethnic composition would open the doors to the controversial Fumes question in the years following World War I and the demise of the Habsburg Empire. At the last Austro-Hungarian census in 1911, the Corpus Separatum had a population of 49,608 people and was composed of the following linguistic communities. Topic: The Fiume question and the Italian-Yugoslav dispute. Habsburg ruled Austria-Hungary's disintegration in October 1918 during the closing weeks of World War I led to the establishment of rival Croatian-Serbian and Italian administrations in the city, both Italy and the founders of the new Kingdom of the Serbs, Croats and Slovenes later the Kingdom of Yugoslavia claimed sovereignty based on their irredentist, unredeemed, ethnic populations. After a brief military occupation by the Kingdom of Serbs Croats and Slovenes, followed by the unilateral annexation of the former Corpus Separatum by Belgrade, an international force of British, Italian, French and American troops entered the city in November 1918. Its future came under discussion at the Paris Peace Conference during the course of 1919. Italy based its claim on the fact that Italians comprised the largest single nationality within the city 46.9% of the total population. Croats made up most of the remainder and were a majority in the surrounding area Andrea Oswanak, who had been the last delegate from Fiume to the Hungarian parliament, was admitted to the conference as a representative of Fiume, and essentially supported the Italian claims. Nevertheless, the city had a strong and very active autonomist party, which also had its delegates at the Paris Conference and was represented by Ruggiero Gotthardi. The Regency of Carnero On 10 September 1919, the Treaty of Saint-Germain was signed, declaring the Austro-Hungarian monarchy dissolved. Negotiations over the future of the city were interrupted two days later when a force of Italian nationalist irregulars led by the poet Gabriele D'Annunzio seized control of the city without casualties and acclaimed by a part of the population. Because the Italian government, wishing to respect the international agreement, did not want to annex Fiume, D'Annunzio and the intellectuals at his side eventually established a state, the Italian Regency of Carnero, a unique social experiment for the age and a revolutionary cultural experience in which various international intellectuals of diverse walks of life took part like Ospert Sitwell, Arturo Toscanini, Henry I, Filippo Tommaso Marinetti, Harukichi Shimoy, Guglielmo Marconi, Alsis de Ambris, Leon Kochnitz Whitney Warren. Among the many political experiments that took place during this period, D'Annunzio and his men undertook a first attempt to establish a movement of non aligned nations in the so called League of Fiume, an organization antithetic to the Wilsonian League of Nations, which it saw as a means of perpetuating a corrupt and imperialist status quo. The organization was aiming primarily at helping all oppressed nationalities in their struggle for political dignity and recognition, establishing links with many movements on various continents, but it never found the necessary external support and its main legacy remains today the regency of Carnero's recognition of Soviet Russia, the first state in the world to have done so. The liberal Giovanni Giolitti became premier of Italy again in June 1920, this signaled a hardening of official attitudes to D'Annunzio's coup. On 12 November, Italy and Yugoslavia concluded the Treaty of Rapallo, which envisaged Fiume becoming an independent state, the Free State of Fiume, under a government acceptable to both powers. 
D'Annunzio's response was characteristically flamboyant and of doubtful judgment. His declaration of war against Italy invited the bombardment by Italian royal forces, which led to his surrender of the city at the end of the year, after five days' resistance known as Bloody Christmas. Italian troops freed the city from D'Annunzio's militias in December 1920. The Free State of Fiume In a subsequent democratic election the Fiumen electorate on April 24, 1921 approved the idea of a free state of Fiume Rieka with an italo fiumen yugoslav consortium for the port, giving an overwhelming victory to the independentist autonomous party. Fiume became a full-fledged member of the League of Nations and the ensuing election of Rieka's first president, Riccardo Zanella, was met with official recognition and greetings from all major powers. The subsequent formation of a constituent assembly for the new country did not put an end to strife within the city. A brief Italian nationalist seizure of power ended with the intervention of an Italian royal commissioner, and another short-lived peace was interrupted by a local fascist putsch in March 1922 which ended with a third Italian intervention to repristinate the previous order. Seven months later, the Kingdom of Italy itself fell under fascist rule, and Fiume's fate was therefore set, the Italian Fascist Party being among the strongest proponents of the annexation of Fiume to Italy. The Free State of Fiume thus was to officially become the first country victim of fascist expansionism. This period of diplomatic acrimony closed with the Bilateral Treaty of Rome, the 27th of January 1924, signed by Italy and Yugoslavia. With it the two neighboring countries were agreeing on invading and partitioning the territory of the small state. Most of the territory of the old corpus separatum became part of Italy, while a few northern villages of Croatian-Slovenian language were annexed by Yugoslavia. The annexation happened de facto on 16 March 1924, and it inaugurated circa 20 years of Italian government for the city proper. The territory of Fiume part of the Kingdom of Italy With the Treaty of Rome the 27th of January 1924 between the Kingdom of Italy and the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, the two countries agreed to annex and split the territory of the Free State of Fiume between themselves. The formal annexation the 16th of March 1924 inaugurated 19 years of Italian fascist rule and the city became the seat of the newly formed province of Carnero. In this period Fiume lost its commercial hinterland and thus part of its economic potential, due to it becoming a border town with little strategic importance for the Kingdom of Italy. But thanks to it retaining the free port status, and its iconic image in the fascist nation-building myth it gained many specific concessions from the government in Rome, a separate tax treatment from the rest of the kingdom and a more humble than in Hungarian times, but continuous inflow of investments from the state. This could still not avoid a substantial slowing of the economic and demographic growth compared to the previous Austro-Hungarian period. <laughs> During World War II and the German operational zone At the beginning of World War II Rijeka immediately found itself in an awkward position. The city was overwhelmingly Italian, but its immediate surroundings and the city of Suzak, just across the Riacina River today a part of Rijeka proper were inhabited almost exclusively by Croatians and part of a potentially hostile power, Yugoslavia. Once the Axis powers invaded Yugoslavia in April 1941, the Croatian areas surrounding the city were occupied by the Italian military, setting the stage for an intense and bloody insurgency which would last until the end of the war. Partisan activity included guerrilla-style attacks on isolated positions or supply columns, sabotage and killings of civilians believed to be connected to the Italian and later German authorities. This, in turn, was met by stiff reprisals from the Italian and German military. On 14 July 1942, in reprisal for the killing of four civilians of Italian origin by the partisans, the Italian military killed 100 men from the suburban village of Podom, resettling the remaining 800 people to concentration camps. After the surrender of Italy to the Allies in September 1943, Rijeka and the surrounding territories were occupied by Germany, becoming part of the Adriatic littoral zone. The partisan activity continued and intensified. 
On 30 April 1944, in the nearby village of Lipa, German troops killed 263 civilians in reprisal for the killing of several soldiers during a partisan attack. Because of its industries oil refinery, torpedo factory, shipyards and its port facilities, the city was also a target of frequent Anglo-American air attacks, which caused widespread destruction and hundreds of civilian deaths. Some of the worst bombardments happened on 12 January 1944 attack on the refinery, part of the oil campaign, on 3–6 November 1944, when a series of attacks resulted in at least 125 deaths and between 15 and 25 February 1945 200 dead, 300 wounded, the area of Rijeka was heavily fortified even before World War II the remains of these fortifications can be seen today on the city outskirts. This was the fortified border between Italy and Yugoslavia which, at that time, cut across the city area and its surroundings. As Yugoslav troops approached the city in April 1945, one of the fiercest and largest battles in this area of Europe ensued. The 27,000 German and additional Italian troops fought tenaciously from behind these fortifications renamed Ingrid Stellung, Ingrid Line, by the Germans. Under the command of the German general Ludwig Kubler they inflicted thousands of casualties on the attacking Yugoslav partisans, which were forced to charge uphill against well-fortified positions to the north and east of the city. Ultimately the Germans were forced to retreat. Before leaving the city, in an act of wanton destruction World War II was almost over, the German troops destroyed the harbour area and other infrastructure with a number of big explosive charges. However, the German attempt to break out of the partisan encirclement northwest of the city was unsuccessful. Of the approximately 27,000 German and other troops retreating from the city, 11,000 were killed many were executed after surrendering, while the remaining 16,000 were taken prisoner. Yugoslav troops entered Rijeka on 3 May 1945. The city had suffered extensive damage in the war. The economic infrastructure was almost completely destroyed, and of the 5,400 buildings in the city at the time, 2,890 were either completely destroyed or heavily damaged. <laughs> Aftermath of World War II and Rijeka part of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia The city's fate was again resolved by a combination of force and diplomacy. Despite the requests of the Fumin government in exile and the initial promises of large autonomy for the city by the Yugoslav authorities up to it becoming a federal republic of Yugoslavia, the city became part of Yugoslavia within the federal state of Croatia. The situation was formalized by the Paris Peace Treaty between Italy and the wartime allies on the 10th of February 1947. Despite the protests of the last democratically elected government and its president in exile Riccardo Zanella, and the attempts by experienced Italian foreign minister Carlo Sforza to uphold the previous Wilsonian plans for a free state solution with a local headquarter for the newly created United Nations. Once the change to Yugoslav sovereignty was formalized, and in particular in the years leading to the Trieste crisis of 1954, 58,000 of the 66,000 Italian speakers were gradually pushed to either emigrate they became known in Italian as Esuli or the exiled ones from Istria, Fiume and Dalmatia or endure a harsh oppression by the new Yugoslav communist regime during the first decades of its existence. The Yugoslav Communist Party opted for Stalinist approach in solving the local ethnic question in particular after the autonomist sympathizers gained massive support in the first local elections held on the city's territory after the war. The discrimination and persecution many inhabitants experienced at the hands of the Yugoslav officials in the last days of World War II and the first years of peace still remain painful memories for the Esuli and somewhat of a taboo topic for Rijeka's political milieu, which is still largely denying the events. Summary executions of alleged fascists often well-known anti-fascists or openly apolitical, aimed at hitting the local intellectual class, the autonomists, Italian public servants, military officials and even ordinary civilians at least 650 executions of Italians took place after the end of the war forced most ethnic Italians to leave Rijeka, Fiume in order to avoid becoming a victim of harsher retaliation. The removal was a meticulously planned operation, aimed at convincing the hardly assimilable Italian part of the autochthonous population to leave the country, as testified decades later by representatives of the Yugoslav leadership. 
The most notable victims of the political and ethnic repression of locals in this period has been the Fiume Autonomists purge hitting the Autonomists still living in the city, and now associated in the Liburnian Autonomist movement. These actively helped the Yugoslav partisans in liberating the region from fascist and Nazi occupation, and despite previous promises of large autonomy for Fiume inside the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, were killed by the Yugoslav secret police OZNA in the days leading and following the Yugoslav army entry the city. In the subsequent years the Yugoslav authorities joined the municipalities of Fiume and Suzik and after 1954 less than one-third of the original population of the now united municipalities mostly the ethnic Croats remained in the city. The old municipality of Fiume lost in these years more than 85% of the original population. Subsequently, the city was resettled by many immigrants from various parts of Yugoslavia, changing heavily the city's demographics and its linguistic composition. This years coincided also with a period of reconstruction and new industrialization. During the period of the Yugoslav Communist Administration in the 1950s to 1980s the city became the main port of the Federal Republic and started to grow once again both demographically and economically thanks to the fact it got once again a solid hinterland, as well as the refurbishing of its traditional manufacturing industries after the war, its maritime economy and its port, now the largest in the country. It soon became the second richest GDP per capita district of Yugoslavia. Many of these industries were a product of a socialist planned economy and the unique Yugoslav cooperative model, and they have not been able to adapt when the economy transitioned to a fully market-oriented model in the early 1990s, not last due to many cases of embezzlement and corruption during the hastened privatization process in the newly formed Republic of Croatia. Thus in 1991 Yugoslavia broke apart, and the federal state of Croatia became independent during the Croatian War of Independence. Since then, the city has stagnated economically and its demography has plunged. Some of its largest industries and employers went out of business among the most prominent the Jugolinia Shipping Company, the Torpedo Factory, the Paper Mill and many other medium or small manufacturing and commercial companies, often in the midst of big corruption scandals and a badly planned privatization. Others are struggling to stay economically viable like the city's landmark 3. Maj shipyards. The city passed from more than 80,000 workers in production to only 5,000 within two decades. A difficult and uncertain transition of the city's economy away from manufacturing and towards the service industry and tourism is still in progress. In 2020 Rijeka will be the European capital of culture alongside Galway. In 2018 it was announced that, 65 years after the abolishment of Italian as an official language of Rijeka, new Croatian-Italian bilingual road signs will be placed for the occasion. <laughs> Rijeka's International Carnival The Rijeka Carnival Croatian, Rijetski Carnival, is held each year before Lent, between late January and early March, in Rijeka, Croatia. Established in 1982, it has become the biggest carnival in Croatia. Every year there are numerous events preceding the carnival itself. First the mayor of Rijeka gives the symbolic key of the city to Mestar Toni, who is the maestro of the carnival, and he becomes the mayor of the city during the carnival, although this is only figuratively. Same day, there is an election of the Carnival Queen. As all the cities around Rijeka have their own events during the Carnival time, Queen and Mestar Toni are attending most of them. Also, every year the Carnival Charity Ball is held in the Governor's Palace in Rijeka. It is attended by politicians, people from sport and media life, as well as a number of ambassadors. The weekend before the main event there are two other events held. One is Rally Paris, Bakar, after the Dakar Rally. The start is a part of Rijeka called Paris after the restaurant located there, and the end is in city of Bakar, located about 20 kilometres southeast. All of the participants of the rally wear masks, and the cars are mostly modified old cars. The other event is the Children's Carnival, held, like the main one, on Rijeka's main walkway Corzo. The groups that participate are mostly from kindergartens and elementary schools, including groups from other parts of Croatia and neighboring countries. In 1982 there were only three masked groups on Rijeka's main walkway Corzo. 
In recent years, the International Carnival has attracted around 15,000 participants from all over the world organized in over 200 carnival groups, with crowds of over 100,000. Demographics In the census of 2011, city proper had a population of 128,624, which include Croats, 106,136 82.52% Serbs, 8,446 6.57% Bosniaks, 2,650 2.06% Italians, 2,445 1.90% Other groups, including Slovenians and Hungarians, formed less than 1% each. The following tables list the city's population, along with the population of X municipality disbanded in 1995, the urban and the metropolitan area. X municipality consists of other cities and municipalities outside Rijeka city proper in a former official union of adjacent settlements which was disbanded in 1995. It includes cities and municipalities of Kastiv, Viskovo, Klana, Kostrina, Kavla, Jelenje, Bikar and Kraljevica. Urban area considered as adjacent area. It includes the X municipality along with cities and municipalities of Apatija, Lavran, Messinica Draga, and Matulji, which form urban agglomeration. Metro area, considered territory of consolidated expansion. It includes cities and municipalities of Krikvenica, Novi Vinodolski, Vinodolska, Lokiv, Fuzin, Delnice, and Omasalj, which all gravitate to the city of Rijeka. Panoramas Panoramic view of Rijeka from Apatija Panoramic view of Rijeka and Uka Notable people from Rijeka Scientists, professors and inventors Antonio Grosic, Fumin Italian doctor, professor of surgery and inventor of the tincture of iodine, senator and irredentist politician Peter Sacher, Fumin Austrian physicist of the Fume Academy, pioneer of ultrafast photography and aerodynamic studies Archduke Joseph Karl of Austria, Archduke of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, pioneering Romani language philologist and Romani ethnograph, member of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences Robert Ludvigovich Bartini, legendary Fumin Soviet aircraft designer and scientist, creator of the Bartini A-57 and Bartini Berea VVA-14 Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, Fumin Hungarian psychology professor at Claremont Graduate University, known as the architect of the notion of flow Giovanni Lupis, a Fumin Croatian -Italian officer of the Austro-Hungarian Navy, lead inventor of the first torpedo Paul Felix Nemeny, Fumin Hungarian mathematician and physicist William Klinger, historian, internationally acclaimed expert of modern Croatian and Yugoslav history Umberto Dancona, Fumin Italian biology professor and founder of the Hydro-Biological Station in Chiogarts and Culture Odin von Horvath, Austro-Hungarian playwright, author of the famous tales from the Vienna Woods, winner of the renowned Kleist Prize in 1931 Maria Crucifixa Kazulik, a Catholic nun founder of the Order of the Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus Oretta Fiume, Fiumin Italian cinema star of the 3040s that starred in Fellini's La Dolce Vita Janko Pollock Kamov, Croatian writer and poet from Suzik Irma Gramatica, famous Fiumin Italian stage and film actress Geronimo Maigne, famous Fiumin Italian teen film actor Romolo Venucci, Fumin Italian Cubist painter and sculptor Osvaldo Ramos, Fumin poet and writer that signed the town's XX century literature and cultural life politics and institutions Ricardo Zanella, Fumin politician, first and only elected president of the Free State of Fiume Giovanni de Chota, Fumin Italian entrepreneur and politician, most successful mayor in the history of Fiume during the city's golden era Michel Mailander, Fumin politician during the Hungarian Crown's dependency, founder of the Autonomous Party of Fumé Andrea Oswanak, businessman and politician, having a leading role in the process of creating the Free State of Fumé, founder of the Autonomous League of Fumé 
Nino Host Venturi, Fumin Italian fascist leader, politician and historian. Leo Valiani, Fumin Italian historian, politician and journalist, dissident during the Italian fascist regime Mario Blasic, Fumin politician and physician, most famous victim of the Fumes Autonomists purge of 1945 Miklos Vasorhelyi, Hungarian dissident and writer, famous for his decades-long fight against the Hungarian Communist Party headed by Janos Kader Janos Kader, chairman of the Central Committee of the Hungarian Communist Party, served for more than 30 years as the leader of Hungary Giovanni Palatucci, last Italian Kalinda Grabar Kitarovic, Croatian president since 2015 Economists and Entrepreneurs Andrea Lodovico Adamic, aristocratic trader from Fiume, builder, one of the most prominent supporters of economical and cultural development of the city Robert Whitehead, English serial entrepreneur, most famous for developing the first effective self-propelled naval torpedo, in collaboration with Giovanni Lupis in Fiume. Luigi Oswanak, serial entrepreneur and businessman, one of the main drivers in Fiume's economic boom during the second half of the 19th century famous sportsman. Alderico Sergo, Fiume Italian professional boxer, gold medalist at the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin. Abdon Pamic, Fumin Italian race walker, gold medalist at the 1964 Tokyo Summer Olympics Ezio Loic, Italian footballer, member of the Grande Torino team which won five consecutive Serie A titles in the 1940s Orlando Sirola, Fumin Italian tennis player Luciano Susange, Fumin Croatian politician, European athletic champion Mirza Zamba, Croatian handball player, world champion and Olympic champion Vladimir Vujicinovic, Serbian water polo player, world and European champion, Olympic silver and bronze medalist musicians Ivan Zajic, Fumin Croatian composer, conductor, director and teacher Dino Chani, Fumin Italian pianist Demir Urban, popular Croatian musician best known for his work as a singer-songwriter for the band Lawfer and for his solo work with his band Four. Topic main sites Tvornica torpedo, the torpedo factory. The first European prototypes of a self-propelled torpedo, created by Giovanni Lupis, a retired naval engineer from Rijeka. The remains of this factory still exist, including a well-preserved launch ramp used for testing self-propelled torpedoes on which in 1866 the first torpedo was tested. The Croatian National Theatre Building Officially opened in October 1885, the Grand Theatre building includes work by the famous Venetian sculptor August Benvenuti and ceiling artist Franz Match, who collaborated with Ernst and Gustav Klimt. Svetist Mikey Bozjater Satsky, the Sanctuary of Our Lady of Trsat. Built 135 metres 443 feet above sea level on the Trsat hill during the late Middle Ages, it represents the guardian of travellers, especially seamen, who bring offerings to her so she will guard them or help them in time of trouble or illness. It is home to the Gothic sculpture of the Madonna of Slunge and to works by the Baroque painter C. Tash. Trsat Castle, a 13th-century fortress, which offers magnificent vistas from its bastions and ramparts, looking down the Riacina River Valley to the docks and the Kv Arner Gulf. Petr Kruzic Staircase or Trsat Stairway, which links downtown Rijeka to Trsat. The stairway consists of 561 stone steps and was built for the pilgrims as the way to reach the sanctuary of Our Lady of Trsat. Old Gate or Roman Arch at first it was thought that this was a Roman triumphal arch built by the Roman Emperor Claudius Gothicus but later it was discovered to be just a portal to the Praetorium, the army command in late antiquity. Rijeka Cathedral, dedicated to St. Vitus. Palace Modelo designed by Burrow Fellner and Helmer and built in 1885. Stadion Cantrida, regarded by many as one of the most iconic and beautiful football stadiums in the world. Climate The terrain configuration, with mountains rising steeply just a few kilometers inland from the shores of the Adriatic, provides for some striking climatic and landscape contrasts within a small geographic area. Beaches can be enjoyed throughout summer in a typically Mediterranean setting along the coastal areas of the city to the east and west 
At the same time, the ski resort of Pladic, located only about 10 kilometers (6.2 miles) from the city, offers alpine skiing and abundant snow during winter months at times until early May. The KV Arner Bay and its islands are visible from the ski slopes. Rijeka has a humid subtropical climate with warm summers and relatively mild and rainy winters. Snow is rare, usually 3 days per year, almost always occurring in patches. There are 20 days a year with a maximum of 30 degrees Celsius 86 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, while on one day a year the temperature does not exceed 0 degrees Celsius 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Fog appears in about four days per year, mainly in winter. The climate is also characterized by frequent rainfall. Cold Bora winds are common in wintertime. Transport. The port of Rijeka is the largest port in Croatia, with a cargo throughput in 2017 of 12.6 million tons, mostly crude oil and refined petroleum products, general cargo and bulk cargo, and 260,337 20-foot equivalent units The port is managed by the Port of Rijeka Authority. The first record of a port in Rijeka date back to 1281, and in 1719, the Port of Rijeka was granted a charter as a free port. There are ferry connections between Rijeka and the surrounding islands and cities, but no direct international passenger ship connections. There are coastal lines to split and onward to Dubrovnik, which operate twice weekly and have international connections. The city is difficult to get to by air outside of the tourist season. The city's own international airport, Rijeka Airport is located on the nearby island of Krk across the tolled Krk Bridge. Buses, with a journey time of approximately 45 minutes, operate from Rijeka city centre and nearby Apatija, with a schedule based on the planned arrival and departure times of flights. Handling 142,111 passengers in 2017, the facility is more of a charter airport than a serious transport hub, although various scheduled airlines have begun to service it with a comparatively large number of flights coming from airports in Germany. Most of these flights only operate during the Torsit season between approximately May and October. Alternative nearby airports include Pula 90 minutes drive from Rijeka and Zagreb around 2.5 hours. Rijeka has efficient road connections to other parts of Croatia and neighboring countries. The A6 motorway connects Rijeka to Zagreb via the A1, while the A7 motorway, completed in 2004, links Rijeka with Ljubljana, Slovenia, via Ilirska Bistrica and with Trieste, Italy. The A7 acts as the Rijeka bypass motorway and facilitates access to the A8 motorway of the Istrian Y network starting with the Ucca tunnel, and linking Rijeka with Istria. As of August 2011, the bypass is being extended eastwards to the Krk Bridge area and new feeder roads are under construction. Rijeka is integrated into the Croatian railway network and international rail lines. A fully electrified railway connects Rijeka to Zagreb and beyond towards Kaprivnica and the Hungarian border as part of Pan-European Corridor VB. Rijeka is also connected to Trieste and Ljubljana by a separate electrified line that extends northwards from the city. Rijeka has direct connections by daily trains to Vienna, Munich, and Salzburg, and night trains running through Rijeka. Construction of a new high-performance railway between Rijeka and Zagreb, extending to Budapest is planned, as well as rail links connecting Rijeka to the island of Krk and between Rijeka and Pula. Sports The history of Rijeka's organized sports started between 1885 and 1888 with the foundation of the Club Alpino Fumano in 1885, the Young American Cycle Club in 1887 the first club of this American league to be founded in a foreign land, and the Nautico Sport Club Cornero in 1888 by the Hungarian minority of the city. Even earlier, in 1873, following the initiative by Robert Whitehead, the first football match to be disputed in today's Republic of Croatia territory was played in Rijeka. The Hungarian Railways team and the English engineers led team of the Stabilimento Tecnico di Fiume, later Torpedo Factory of Fiume. The first football club in Fiume was founded under the name of Fiume Atletici Club. Today, HNK Rijeka are the city's main football team. They compete in the Croatian First Football League and were the champions of Croatia in 
Until July 2015, HNK Rijeka were based at the iconic Stadion Kantrida. With Kantrida awaiting reconstruction, they are based at the newly built Stadion Rujevica, their temporary home ground located in the club's new training camp. Additionally, HNK Origent 1919 are based in Suzak and play in the Croatian Third Football League. Rijeka's other notable sports clubs include RK Zamit and Zerk Zamit handball, VK Primorje Eb water polo, KKKV Arner basketball, and Zak Rijeka women's volleyball. Rijeka hosted the 2008 European Short Course Swimming Championships. In its more than 80 years of history, Len had never seen so many records set as the number of them set at Bazeni Kantrida, Kantrida Swimming Complex. A total of 14 European records were set of which 10 world records and even 7 world best times. This championship also presented a record in the number of participating countries. There were more than 600 top athletes, from some 50 European countries. Swimmers from 21 nations won medals and 40 of the 51 national member federations of LEN were present in Rijeka. International relations Twin towns — sister cities Rijeka is twinned with In popular culture A stylized version of Fiume during the 1920s was one of the main settings in the 1992 movie Porco Rosso by world acclaimed Japanese director Hayao Miyazaki, as the town in front of which the fantastical Hotel Adriano is found and to which it is connected by a boat service taken by the protagonist. Bruce Sterling's November 2016 novel written in collaboration with Warren Ellis, Pirate Utopia, a dieselpunk alternative history, is set in Fiume in 1920 during the short-lived Italian regency of Carnero. The 1980s American TV series, The Winds of War, was in part filmed in Rijeka and the surrounding areas. The popular German Western Winnetou movies from the 1960s, based on Karl May novels, were in part filmed on location in the outskirts of Rijeka. The setting of the popular 1970s cartoon series Professor Balthazar was inspired by Rijeka. The TV series Novine, the paper, which has been streaming on Netflix since April 2018, is based in Rijeka and the city was used as the main filming location. Topic: See also Quotes about Rijeka Kavla Charter of Carnero was the constitution of the Italian Regency of Carnero, a short-lived government in Fiume, Rijeka. Krikvenica Drenova, Rijeka Fiume Disambiguation. Geography of Croatia Alario Carpozio Kastiv Kostrina K. V. Arner Gulf List of Governors and Heads of State of Fiume Primorje Gorski Kotar County Robert Whitehead Riasina Suzik TRSAT Fuzin